Assalamu alaikum, hello everyone. Uh, today I'm going to be making dough two ways, one by hand and one in the machine to make roti or chapatis with only two ingredients. I have always ever made it with two ingredients, uh, which is wheat flour and water. Um, no oil, no salt, nothing else added in there. So um, I'm, I've got here about two cups of wheat flour and I'm just adding in uh, water um, just gathering the dough up not kneading it or squishing it in my hand at all just lightly with um, a gentle hand gathering the flour so it's all soaked um, in the water just gathering it and bringing it into the middle as to form a ball and um, then we will leave this dough for about 30 minutes at least covered and just out on the counter for 30 minutes minimum so all i have done is added small amounts of water to the wheat flour and just uh, gradually gathered it up into a loose ball now look at the texture here it'll have some dry bits in some wet bits in that's fine as long as it's just into a like a floppy kind of ball it's fine and we will leave this for half an hour sprinkle some water over it just a few drops and uh, the half an hour will allow the dough dough to absorb the extra water to become much softer and manageable until we get back to it. Okay, so over to my mixer now. Uh, if you have a mixer, I can say that dough making is very, very easy. However, it's still nice to finish it off by hand. So I've got the same amount of flour in here, two cups, and I've got the um, dough hook attached. Just adding water to it gradually. As it's gathered the water, I'm adding a bit more water. Don't wait too long in between because then it'll make it into a, a hard, uh, lump of dough and we don't want that because then it's too hard to get it to soften again so after a while i'm just checking it with my hand and uh, sprinkle some water over the top and the same with that we will just give it a quick whiz again because it was quite um it was not as soft as i wanted it so i'm just gonna whiz it up again a little bit more and then add some more water drops on there and let that rest as well Meanwhile, I've got back to my um, handmade dough and going to knead that final knead that is. Well, it's the only knead that we've done in it. So knead it for a good five, six minutes. And the more longer you knead it, the nicer it becomes. You maybe need to add some uh, water drops in there, but not loads. As you can see, it's become nice and soft and that is it. That is the dough ready to be rolled out and made into roti or chapati and uh, the roti making is an art as well. So uh, once I've uh, done this kneading on this and I'm happy with it, this can go into um, a box and put it in the fridge or you can start cooking with it straight away. Okay, so back to the dough in my machine. That's had a nice relaxed uh, 30 minutes or so as well. It's nice and soft. I'm just gonna have a look at that, add a little bit more water and gonna put the machine on again. It's gonna knead it into a really nice soft ball of dough. Um, gonna leave the bowl clean as well. It's not gonna be sticky at all. I do like to finish it off by hand so I won't totally need it in this machine now. Okay so I'm just gonna get rid of the machine for a while and finish it off kneading it by hand. It's always nice to knead the dough by hand because you can tell how soft and hard it is or how if it needs any water or anything and it just feels so nice to knead the dough. Okay, so that's done. It's not taken long at all and we are done. Okay, so both my doughs are here ready. This is the one that I made in the machine. It's nicely done. It's got no lumps in it. This is the one made by hand. That's nicely done as well. And we are ready to cook. Um, I only cook the chapati once on each side and that is it. And then we cook it on the flame of the cooker. 
so first I'm going to be making roti with the dough that I made in the machine um, it's going to be nice and puffy and thin not thick at all make sure the pan or the tava that we use to make the roti is not too thin and it's on your highest burner uh, this is a wok burner that I've got and uh, I use that to heat my pan my pan is quite thick so it doesn't heat up quickly straight away so I'm going to start off with a small sized bowl of dough make it into a nice smooth circle there's no cracks in there and start rolling it into a circular motion adding flour only when it starts to stick to the countertop putting in too much flour too soon uh, can make it hard uh, the dough to be hard and not as um, uh, smooth and soft as we need it because if it's hard in the beginning it won't puff up when it's cooking because there's no um, moisture left in there doing this action gets rid of the excess flour and also stretches the roti out I was a bit distracted there so it's just gone slightly off the pan but it's fine what we're looking for is uh, can you see the brown spots there once you start see seeing the brown spots it that's like heated on one side there'll still be some raw spots there but that's fine turn it over so that's your second flip you've done there that's too soon to start um, uh, cooking it onto the flame we're looking for brown colored spots there I've got my tea towel here ready for my roti to go into once it's done Okay, so now we can see brown spots forming on there. We can get ready to cook it on the flame. So I'm just gonna take it off there and transfer it onto the actual fire. As you can see, I'm just gonna be turning it around, uh, around over the fire and it bubbles up and puffs up really nicely. Just gonna let it go all the way around, make sure all the bits around it are cooked properly on the fire and then turn it over I'm gonna do the same for the other side and just cook it all the way around so it's nice and even and it creates some nice brown cooked spots on there as well okay so now this is ready i'm just flipping it over again and putting it into the tea towel it'll stay nice and warm and soft there now making uh, another chapati roti with the dough that i made by hand Okay, so this time again using very little flour only when need to and uh, taking off the excess. Put it straight onto the hot pan looking for the cooked brown spots. Doesn't have to be all the way around but just a few brown um, cooked areas there as you can see and turn it over and that's it. We're not going to turn it over again. This one is ready as well now to go on to the fire and it will all puff up really nicely because of the moisture inside it. It hasn't completely dried out on the pan so this allows it to puff up. Okay. 
hope you enjoyed the video do try the recipe and let me know how it turns out in the comment section below thank you